Hello everyone, my name is Adam Arneson. I'm a product manager here at Emerson Test and Measurement. And I'm excited to talk to you today a little bit about our System Link product. Uh, System Link is our operating system of the modern lab and is our tool we use to bring together the various stakeholders in the modern validation lab to allow them to collaborate and work together to get their job done. There's many aspects of System Link and you can see some of those in our other videos. Um, from specification compliance to work orders and test plan tracking all the way through data analysis and data management. Today I'm going to focus a little bit on the ways that we can extend System Link to specifically meet your unique problems and challenges. System Link comes with a lot of features out of the box that can be helpful for your daily work, but everywhere we look for System Link there are different ways we need to integrate data or workflows or third-party tools or just show your data in a unique way for your particular use case. So today we'll walk through six different ways that we can extend System Link for your particular application. We'll start by looking at some Python analysis routines, talk about how we can trigger those from the application. We'll show how you can show computed columns in your uh, tables. And then we'll also show how you can use System Link to access these analysis routines contextually. And then we'll end up by talking a little bit about dashboarding and some of our REST APIs and Python APIs that make this easy for you to do. So let's jump right in. We're going to start in with looking at how we do Python in System Link. So let me bring you here to the home page for System Link. This is what it looks like. We're going to spend most of our time today in this analysis section to start off with. So I'm going to open up this script section, and this will bring me to a Jupyter development environment that looks like this. What I can see here is all of the files that I'm currently working on in my environment, and I actually have a, a live editor that I can see here in the right-hand page. So today I've been working on this compliance report, which has to do with how do I analyze my data against my product specifications. And I can see here I've got some documentation, and then I get right into my code here in the window. Now, as I'm writing, I can edit my code right here in line. I can say, you know, let's change the ID of the product to something, or maybe I can change the name of the output file, and then I can immediately save these edits right here in the web. And then I'll be able to share these with my team. Once I'm done editing, I can publish these notebooks by sharing them to System Link within a workspace. So here I'm going to save this to our demo workspace, and I'm going to define an interface for it. Now, there are several different interfaces that you can use for Jupyter, and each of these different interfaces makes the notebook show up in a different part of the System Link application. So in this case, I know that this notebook is for analyzing specifications, so I'm going to publish it as a specification analysis notebook uh, so that I can see it later. And I'll show you where that ends up later on. Once I hit Publish, it'll say I've already published this one before, so I'm overriding that, and I'll just hit Publish, and it's successful. One other thing that's really helpful as you're authoring your Jupyter Notebooks is to sometimes use a development environment that maybe you're more familiar with. The web-based environment is powerful, but often I like to use something like Visual Studio Code. Um, so you'll see here I have my Visual Studio Code. This is my same notebook that I have here. If I do it this way, I can access source code control like Git. I can collaborate with my team on the actual code. And then when I'm done, I can upload these notebooks to System Link and then publish them. I'm also able to directly connect this IDE to System Link. I can grab the identification for remote deployment. If I copy this, I can come back over to my um, Visual Studio Code and connect directly my kernel to this environment. So I can use a server, I can paste in this with my token, and now I'm going to be able to connect and directly run from my local IDE, but running on the server. This helps a lot as you're trying to debug or use the libraries that are included in System Link, but be able to use your IDE locally. OK, let's go back over to System Link for just a second. So now that we've published a notebook like this, what we can do next is let's go look at C and see where this notebook can be utilized. So we're going to go back to our main System Link page, and we're going to take a look at something called routines. Now, a routine is something that you can create that will automatically run an analysis like the one we just created based on some triggers. So let's take a look at an example here. So I can create a spec analysis routine, and I'm just going to give it a description for the cool demo. It's going to run in my demo workspace so that only the right people have access to it. 
and I'm going to run it at a specific date and time. I can also run these analyses based on when a file is uploaded or when some metadata about a file has changed. But for this case, let's just pick a date and time. So let's say, let's run it today, and maybe we'll run it a little bit later this afternoon. So let's run it at, I don't know, 1700. We will run it every day at 5 p.m. my time, right? And I'm going to say, when this trigger happens, I'm going to execute a notebook. I will find the notebook I just published, which is this one of these examples. And then I can hit Create. And what this will do is every day at 5 p.m., it will run that notebook that I've created and do whatever actions I needed it to do. This might be something like generating a report, analyzing some data, calculating the percentage of your utilization of your assets, or anything else that you can access using your system link APIs. OK, so now I've created that. I can see it here, and I can go and look at it, edit it. I can disable it if I want to, which I'm going to do so I don't break my environment later. And this is how you set up routines for your automation of your system. Once you have a routine set up, you can see how it's been executed by going to your executions tab. And I can see here there's a bunch of executions of routines that have worked. Here's an example of an extraction that ran. I can see the properties that it ran with and the parameters. And if it's passed, like this one did. I can also quickly see if there's some failed ones, right? So here's an example of one that failed. And I get an exception trace that shows me maybe where I can go to debug my code. OK, so that's how you publish notebooks from, from Jupyter. All right. Let's look a little bit about how you can use notebooks for showing information in a column of a table. So let's go quickly over to our, our systems grid here. Our systems have lots of different properties. And I can use these properties as a placeholder for analysis results. So in this case, what I've done is I'm going to add a column based on a notebook, right? So here I have some calibration notebooks that I've created. And I'm going to say, run this every 24 hours, and I'm going to give it a custom name, demo calibration. And now, I'm, now I've added this column. I can see it at the bottom, and I can hit OK. If I can scroll over here, you'll see the new column. Here it is. Here's this demo calibration column that I've just created. And you can see it has some data from the last time I ran the notebook. And this will run every 24 hours and update the data in this column for this grid. So I can use this as an easy way to add analysis results onto the columns that I've created for systems. And this applies also in other areas of the system link application. So where else can we use, where else can we use these analysis routines in system link? There are several places. Let me show you a couple of, of interesting ones. Let's jump over to test results for a minute. So in this table, in fact, let's look at it from a product perspective. So here's a product that I've been working on. It's a voltage regulator. And I've captured 14 test results from several of the DUTs that I'm working on. Now that I'm done with my testing, what I'd like to do is run an analysis to see what are the results and what can I learn from the results. So I can select these, and I can hit Analyze. And this gives me another interface to see notebooks that I've published. In this case, if you remember back to the interfaces we talked about earlier, this is a results analysis interface. So I've got several options here. And I can see, hey, there is a results summary report example. And I'm going to pass these results to it. And I can hit Analyze. And it will run that analysis for me and produce the results and give them back. There are several other places you can do this. Um, the specifications grid allows you to analyze specs. You can also do this from a files. I can select multiple files and analyze these. And again, same kind of idea. I get different notebooks that I can run against the selected items. So the takeaway here is that from many places inside of the system link application, you can manually trigger executions of notebooks to give you analysis that's contextualized to what you're interested in in the application at that particular moment. OK. So we've talked a little bit about how you author Jupyter Notebooks, how you can publish them to System Link, how you can access them through routines, and how you can access them manually through the web interface. Let's talk a little bit about some other ways you can customize the data that you show. 
One of the other ways that you can access your data from System Link that's an extensibility point for you is using our dashboarding system. So let's take a look at that really quickly. If I go to this Explore tab, I can see several different data sources that are built into our dashboards where I can pull my own specific data from System Link. So in this case, you can see I've got access to my data frames, assets, notebooks, systems, etc. This is also an area where you can add your own data sources into this system for your own extensibility. Let's take a look at the data frames just as an example so you can see how this works. So I can search here for battery, for example, find one of these different battery tables, and quickly pick a few of the columns that I want to view and run the query. Now, what's really interesting about this is this plugin for this data is actually something that we have open source. You can access it on GitHub, and you're welcome to contribute back to our system and provide your own input about how to make these data sources better. We're always looking for input for the, from the community on how to make these better. There are two other very important things you need to understand about how to extend System Link Enterprise. And this has to do with our open set of APIs. So everything you've ever seen us do in the user interface for System Link through our web interface, you can also do through the APIs. We don't have any hidden APIs. Everything we do is open and available for you to use for extensions. From the System Link app, you can go to our documentation for our APIs, and you can see the detailed documentation for every one of our different services. So just as an example, I can show you here is the API for the data table service, and I can see the details of each of these different REST APIs, what the parameters are, what the schemas are, and how I can use them. In addition, if you remember back when we were talking about Jupyter, we have several Python wrappers for these REST APIs that make them easy for you to use in your Jupyter environment. These are also open source, and we'd love to have you contribute. Let me just show you what those look like, for example. Here's an example of our System Link open source Python libraries that connect with our REST APIs. Uh, and you can see there are several different System Link packages in here where there's different clients for data frames, for specifications, for tags, and test monitor. Our NI contributors are always adding to these APIs, and we would love to have our community engage and help us make these even better for your use case. Today we've talked about several different ways that you can extend System Link for your own application in your validation lab. The extensibility of our platform is critical to your success because it allows you to take the power of System Link and apply it directly to your specific problem and application. There are a lot of general areas where System Link will give you lift and give you benefit for your lab operations, but because you can extend it, both with NI's help and on your own, you can make it do exactly what you want. We see extension points often for customers where they use our extensibility to connect to third-party data systems or to connect to requirements management tools or to pull data from disparate, disparate sources or even to share data with third-party consumers who are outside of their immediate ecosystem. So the extensibility of our platform provides unique value for you in your lab. There are several different ways that we extend, as we talked about today. It's centered about Python and our Jupyter Notebooks which can then be triggered in automated ways, shown in columns, accessed from your context within the System Link application, and of course connected to our visualizations and dashboarding. And all of this is publicly documented for you, and we invite your contributions on our open source projects that give us even better API access to the System Link data sources. Thank you for watching today. I hope you've learned something about how you can extend System Link to meet your applications in your lab. We've talked a lot about Python-based analysis, how you can trigger it from System Link, show it in computed columns, and use it for context-aware analysis, as well as connect it to custom dashboards and our public REST API. Now, extensibility is very important as a platform element for System Link, because with it, you can take the power of System Link and apply it to your specific problems. You can use these extensibility points to connect to third-party software, to connect to other databases, to connect to requirements frameworks, or even to provide data to other third parties who may not have access directly to your System Link application. If you'd like to learn more, please visit us online at ni.com slash systemlink, or you can find more videos like this one at youtube.com slash at nisystemlink. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.